How should you feel when your partner wants to return the gift you got them? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, did I, 21-year-old female, ruin our relationship by going home after he, 30-year-old male, was late? This just happened, so tell me if I messed up. I met this guy, 30-year-old male, on a dating app a while ago, and we went on one date two weeks ago. We were supposed to meet up a week ago, but something popped up for the both of us and we couldn't make it. We set up a date for today. I asked him if meeting up at 8 was acceptable, and he said yes. I'm 100% sure I can make it. So we agreed to meet at 8 at one spot. I texted him an hour before to let him know that I was ready and I'll head out soon. I never heard back. I arrive at the place a little early because I feel bad if people wait long for me, but he wasn't there. At 7.58, I receive a text that he'll be a few minutes late, which was fine to me. I waited and at 8.25, I receive a text that he's 20 minutes away. I was baffled. I was mostly upset because it's cold outside and our area is known for having creeps in it and I was entirely alone waiting in high heels. I texted him, wow, okay, I'm going home. I get home and he's calling me and telling me he's there and I should go back. I'm sorry, but it was cold and I waited enough. So I told him he can head home because I'm not going back in this cold butt weather. I also told him, we could have agreed on 9 p.m. You should have just informed me on time. But you said 8 suits you most and didn't text me until I was already there. He told me that if he does go home, we'll never see each other again and that I should be ashamed for throwing this all away for just a 30 minutes wait. I said to him that's fine. If he can't keep his word, I'm fine with not dating him. Reddit, did I ruin this? Should I have went back? If this 30 year old man says I'm gonna be perfectly fine showing up at 8, and after they not only blow through that but show up 40 plus minutes later and then have the gall to say, you only had to wait 30 minutes. Even if there was a very legitimate reason for that to happen, he wasn't forthcoming about that. And considering this is the first date, you are not in the wrong at all. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy tricky relationship topics, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, how do I, 25-year-old female, tell my husband, 30-year-old male, that I'm not his therapist and can't handle his emotional baggage anymore? So I, 25-year-old female, have been married to my husband, 30-year-old male, for two years. My husband very clearly has a lot of emotional issues, which is okay, except the last four to five months he's been putting way too much on me. Every day he'll say something along the lines of, he's having a bad day due to being stuck in his head, which eventually leads to an argument every single time. To clarify, when he says he's stuck in his head, it usually means he's making up a scenario in his head and then taking it out on me. For example, I had a male friend who I'd known long before I met my husband. My husband said this friendship made him uncomfortable recently and asked me to remove the friend from my social media. I did as he asked without a fight. Then my husband said he didn't really want me to delete the friend because then my friend would message me to ask why. I would tell him because my husband made me, then hide that conversation from my husband. We then fought for that for about 20 minutes. I want to make it very clear that did not happen. My husband made that up in his head. That's just one example of many. He always makes things up and then either starts a fight with me about it or will spend the rest of the day sitting around pouting. I can't ever talk to him about my feelings because it turns into an argument about his feelings. When I try to confront that issue, he says I'm twisting things and that I make everything his fault. At this point, he feels like an extra child and I'm worried he's too fragile to outright tell him that I'm not his therapist and I don't want to be. He's seriously starting to affect my mental health. Every time he says he's stuck in his head, I get so anxious because I know what the rest of the day is going to bring on to me. I've suggested he find a therapist. I've demanded he find a therapist, but he refuses. I love my husband, but he's ruining our marriage and making me not like him much anymore. My relationship feels fully one-sided. What do I do? I think it would be incredibly fair to him to be forthcoming about the fact that him not seeking help for these issues and trying to push all of this stuff that honestly is being fabricated onto you is not fair to you and is frankly damaging the relationship. I think all you really can do is make it clear that if this keeps happening, it's not something that can keep going on forever and either they seek help for it with your support or they'll full on lose it at some point. I would say for OP's own mental health, just make sure that they stop tolerating putting up with any of that. I'm not saying cut them off, I'm just saying when something like this happens, make it clear that they need to seek help for it. 
Our next story is, my boyfriend, 30 year old male, says I'm 25 year old female, disrespectful. I've tried changing but it's not working. Help! I, 25 year old female, and my boyfriend, 30 year old male of one year, have a great relationship in my opinion. We have our ups and downs of a normal relationship troubles, solely miscommunication, on both ends. Aside from that, it's a very caring partnership. But there's been a handful of times where an issue is repeated and my boyfriend says he'll leave me if I don't convince him I've changed. He says I'm disrespectful when upset, for example saying things like, get your crap together or act like an adult. From me, when I'm completely enraged, will hurt him so badly he'll take space from me for a week. I never mean to hurt him, I always apologize afterward and work hard to resolve things. I'm always searching for self-help guides, books, podcasts, videos on ways to better myself, but no matter how well I'm keeping my cool in an argument, if I happen to get overly frustrated, I can't prevent myself from taking on a harsh tone and being sassy. My anger always stems from feeling misunderstood. It builds up like a painful fire in my chest, and I can't hold on to it, nor do I know where to direct it. If I try and take space, my boyfriend accuses me of stonewalling him. I feel like I just can't win no matter what I do and how hard I try to improve. I can't afford to spend hundreds on therapy. My boyfriend told me he would help me pay for sessions back when I was in a bad depression. I've since gotten out, but has since gone back on that offer. I'm doing everything I can think of to improve, besides going broke paying for therapy, but my boyfriend doesn't believe me. He says it's my responsibility to better myself and he has no advice for me besides getting a therapist. I feel completely overwhelmed and alone in this. He said it's my last chance and I'm starting to feel numb inside again. Maybe I should let him go and he can find someone that always speaks kindly to him no matter how upset they get. I can feel my self-hatred depression returning and it's depleting any and all motivation I have. I feel demonized and I don't know what to do. For clarification, in my past relationships, I've never been accused of disrespect. We've had a mutual understanding that people aren't perfect. They say harsh things when dealing with strong emotions. My only parent was verbally and physically abusive towards me, and I would never follow in her footsteps. I admit my faults, demonstrate my apologies. I don't name call, manipulate, get physical, or intend any kind of malice. This is my boyfriend's first serious relationship. He's a child of divorce. He says I'm a great partner who's supportive and caring, but when I disrespect him, he says he loses majority of trust for me. He's told me he enforces boundaries, but I've failed them. He said he fears one day I'll resort to throwing plates at him or cussing him out. I would never even conceptualize the idea and it hurts he thinks of me this way. I've asked him if he thinks we have a normal relationship. He said yes, and it's similar to his friends' relationships who are married. I told him it seems like I'm being punished for not being perfect. However, he said his expectations aren't unrealistic and he's contemplating giving up on me. I feel like there's a little bit of both sides going on here. This guy's saying, oh, well, you're freaking out and it's scaring me. And then when you do a rather normal coping mechanism like taking a step away or taking a small break for yourself to kind of settle yourself, they immediately go, why aren't you here? Why are you stonewalling me? This guy can just straight up disappear for a week, but you can't have any time to yourself when things are heated. I definitely feel like there's a bit of the boyfriend not realizing his own faults as well, even if there is stuff for both sides to try to work on. Our next story is my 34-year-old female, boyfriend 33-year-old male of one year, is blowing fat stacks on glass dinosaurs. When me and my boyfriend started dating, he was really poor. His financial situation has since improved, but our dating life is still molded around spending as little money as possible. When we hang out, we hang out at my home because he lives with three other people. We also cook food or eat frozen food. When we eat restaurant food, it's takeout from a small handful of cheap places. Sometimes he vetoes a place because it's too expensive, even if the intention is splitting the bill 50-50. He vetoed a brunch place because he could make French toast himself. He does not make French toast. We don't go to fun dates to the aquarium, museums, coffee shops, anything like that. I'm tired of hanging out at my house. He has never given me a present. I had to tell him after my birthday passed that next time, I would like a verbal acknowledgement like saying, happy birthday, and a sweet treat. Recently, he has rekindled an old interest that costs money. In the name of anonymity, I'm calling it glass dinosaurs. 
He keeps sending me links to intricate glass dinosaur sculptures that cost hundreds of dollars that he purchased. It secretly upsets me because I still want to go to the freaking aquarium. How do I tell him that his priorities make me sad without sounding like I hate hobbies and fun or like I'm a gold digger who wants his money? I know that dragons may seem stupid to me, but they're not stupid if they make him happy. I just want to do more fun things. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with him having his hobbies and his interests. And admittedly, I'm the kind of person that's more than happy just hanging around the house pretty much all the time. But I understand that when you're in a relationship, you want to try to have some fun experiences together, right? This guy hasn't taken you to the aquarium or gone on a day date to a museum. If you're bringing up that you want and honestly need these kinds of things, which is understandable to want and need in a relationship, if they can't even pivot just a little bit to try to make this relationship more rewarding for you, I'm not saying it's a deal breaker, but it is pretty darn concerning for a long-term outlook. It just seems like they don't value OP's desires enough. They consider them low enough in value to straight up say, ah, we can't afford that. We're better off without it, basically. Our next story is, my wife, 27-year-old female, told me, 28-year-old male, having sex with prostitutes isn't cheating while married. Well, today I learned an interesting fact about my wife that kinda disturbed me. We were driving and she kept telling me she doesn't view prostitution as cheating and couples who use them aren't cheating as long as they tell each other. She basically went on to explain further that in her eyes it's just using them like a toy and I feel like the world would be better off if married couples could just freak other people and said she'd love to do it someday. She went on to tell me that it's an amazing way to explore your fantasies like taking an 11 inch you know what and make you feel good because every partner can't sexually please your fantasies all the time. We haven't hooked up in weeks and I've been working 10 to 15 hour days trying to help pay bills with inflation at an all time high. We're currently on a mini getaway, her and I, and she rolled over and I tried to initiate some foreplay and she immediately tells me, I'm not interested. My BPD kicked in, and I immediately rolled over with anger and frustration with the rejection. I love my wife, but her telling me having sex with prostitutes isn't cheating really has hurt me. She's rejected me for weeks and I feel completely useless, hurt, miserable in terms of how low my marriage has reached, and overall, so angry. Am I the only one who finds this very confusing? Concerning? I chatted with her more and told her how uncomfortable this made me. So personally, if I found myself in this situation, I would be feeling like this isn't even her saying these things. This is her asking for permission to do these things. I think she was throwing that out there hoping for you to be like, oh yeah, I agree. Let's try it. Let's see how that goes. I'm not going to lie, I would be feeling pretty devastated. Frankly, that kind of talk in a relationship with me where I was expecting monogamy, that might just be like a fast pass ticket to ending the relationship. Because clearly, if you're talking that way, this relationship is not working out in whatever way you need it to be. And lord knows, you don't need that kind of baggage hanging over your shoulders while you're already working 10-15 to 15 hour days. Our next story is, my 32-year-old female, boyfriend 42-year-old male, brought his laundry over to do at my place, but didn't bring my underwear. My intuition, my gut, have me suspecting that my boyfriend has cheated on me about a month plus ago. However, no concrete evidence. He's super secretive and takes his phone with him everywhere. He became dodgy, distant, and came over 9pm one night, smelt very floral, I asked him about it and he said he didn't know, it must be his new herbal salve. I've since smelled it, it's herbal but not floral, he's not smelled like it since. There was a sweater he knew was shrunk to a woman's size but brought it back out to try it on again, knowing it didn't fit him. He brought it back out because I hung it up and I suspected when it was brought out the time before, a female was wearing it as special glasses we've only ever had wine out of were out on his counter, rinsed but stacked to be washed. I confronted him the second time it was out wondering why if he knew it didn't fit. He got mad and started to call me crazy. He doesn't do dishes and I suspect a woman did his dishes as they were laid out on a towel, utensils put in a cup. There was two cups, two forks, two knives. Sounds silly but in a year and a half I've never seen him do his dishes that way when he has seldomly done them. I confronted him and he denied it. He also doesn't put his clothes away, they pile up on his couch. 
clothes I've left there before had remained where I left them. I've been suspect, so I've left things specifically. My pants were then hidden in a box. He had a towel on the ground. I had decided to leave a pair of my underwear under it. I didn't know why or what, but if another woman found it, or because I wanted to see his reaction if I played dumb if he picked it up while I was there, because I found hair ties and it was an interesting response when I said it wasn't mine. Anyways, okay. So he brought his laundry over to my house to do, aka for me to do, and this towel was in there, but my underwear that was underneath it was not. I find it weird not to mention the underwear, nor to bring it, but my thought is that he didn't know if it was mine or another's. There's random inconsistencies that just don't add up. He becomes very vague. I know I have a past wound where my ex-husband cheated on me over and over, so I'm aware that this can influence this, but things are just too weird sometimes. Also, since I've started questioning him, he doesn't want to go to his house anymore, making excuses, only wanting to come to my house, will throw a temper tantrum to not go to his house. Should I ask up front why he didn't bring my underwear? Should I play dumb and say, Hey, I noticed this towel had underwear under it the last time I was at your house. As a man, if you found your partner's underwear while cleaning up, would you tell them and bring it if you were doing laundry at their place? I mean, I think the real problem here is this guy is 42 years old and he doesn't do dishes, never did his laundry. He brought his laundry to your place for you to do it. Beyond the fact that it does seem like he's quite possibly cheating or covering some stuff up, has this guy been that much of a keeper to begin with? I think the sooner you confront this, the better. Our next story is, husband works from home full time. My spouse works from home in our basement. I'm currently not working but have two kids which I do all the cooking, cleaning, homework, etc. I also just had a major surgery which I'm recovering from. I did have a job previously for 15 years. I make my husband's coffee every morning and his lunch every afternoon and his dinner every evening. When he used to work in the office, he bought coffee and lunch. I only had to worry about dinner and even then, he used to pick up takeout a couple of days per week. I feel like I'm going crazy being his food servant and I miss the olden days when I didn't have to do this. However, we're saving a crap ton of money and I'm not working right now, but it is making me somewhat depressed and unhappy. He's also quite short with me at times and never says thank you for any of this. It's just kind of become my role. I mean, I think this is all about where communication comes into play. I think if you come to them being honest but not hostile and just explain that you would appreciate some gratitude or some assistance every now and then, you know, just something that makes you feel like you're appreciated and that there's some effort going on, it would make a world of difference, right? I mean, sometimes in a relationship, things just get complacent once in a while. I don't think it's ever always going to be perfect and sometimes a partner needs to get a little kick. The real issue is if you communicate your needs and there's no sign of rebounding. Our next story is, my 24-year-old female, boyfriend, 26-year-old male, is asking me to be quiet or more reserved in public settings, plus more submissive. Howdy everyone, I've run into a bit of a dilemma that's making me really rethink whether or not I want to be with my boyfriend of almost two years. For the past year, we've been fighting constantly. My boyfriend is extroverted and is getting his MBA, so he's been actively trying to grow his network. I'm an introverted and shy person by nature, but I work in a very busy and talkative industry, so I'm getting used to talking a bit more and engaging when I'm out in public. I'm planning on building a career in the field I'm working in right now, so it's really important for me to learn to hold my own in conversations, etc. As a part of this, I've also been trying to smile more and ask questions. Additionally, I'm a first-gen immigrant and oldest in my family, just like my boyfriend, so I've grown really independent and just used to doing things on my own. I don't party, I don't go clubbing, all of my closest friends are women who are in long-term relationships and also don't party or go clubbing. The relevance of this is described a bit later below. Recently, my boyfriend asked me that if we are to continue the relationship, he needs me to 1. Take his lead everywhere, 2. Be reserved or fully quiet when he takes me out somewhere because he needs to make the best impression on people and the people he meets are going to be his network moving forward. 3. In general, be submissive. Please note that he gave me this list with a question of whether or not I can comply. These are deal breakers for him. Technically, I don't mind these things, but I heavily dislike the tone in which this list was presented. 
and the ways in which he has enforced this list in the past. Here is one example and one where I admit I might have been in the wrong. I met his friends at a house party, and the group was talking about this one sketch bar. Specifically, folks were sharing their bad experiences with some stories about guys touching women, etc. I've only gone to this bar once years ago and had a terrible experience with one guy coming up to me and trying to bite my neck, so I share this in a nonchalant way like, yeah, the only time I've been in there I almost got bitten by some random dude. Left immediately after. My boyfriend was mortified. He spent an entire hour explaining to me that my comment was extremely inappropriate, that his friends are going to think I'm someone who bar hops all the time, and that I honestly should have just been quiet because he doesn't even trust these people and doesn't know what they're going to say behind his back now. Another example, I was invited to a housewarming event by my best friend. My boyfriend and I were fighting at the time and I decided to go to the event by myself. After all, this is my best friend and I talked to her about it. I hated the idea of bringing my boyfriend and continuing our fight at their house. I knew tensions were high and I would have hated to be that person, ruining her night. So I went alone, but not before I heard 10,000 different comments about why can't I bring him? Why would I even think about going without him to a housewarming party? I'm prioritizing a party over my relationship with him? He asked me to tell my friend that he's coming. I said no and that if he doesn't allow me to go to a housewarming party, then I'm done. To this day, he uses this as an example of me setting ultimatums, doing what I want without regard for him, and leading a single-person way of life. Additionally, any happy hour invite with any female friend is met with, those are single people places, no girlfriend of mine is going to that. Any pushback from me that these are my close friends who are all mature women has been met with, I don't care what they do, I'm dating you. I personally don't have any issues with women going out with their friends alone, and I don't see going out as an exclusively promiscuous activity. I just started feeling like I'm being spoken to with undertones and insinuations that I'm a party gal and somehow promiscuous. Recently I didn't meet him for dinner because I had prior commitments. I was meeting with a friend who's going through a breakup. We were already arguing about other things, so I simply texted him that I couldn't meet him that night, Friday, and that I'll let him know later what my plans are for the weekend. He called me a tramp and said that this is tramp behavior. Wrote a whole essay about how I'm never submissive and make a fool of him in public. How does one go about this relationship? He is really caring in other ways and he's helped me a ton, but I'm starting to feel a bit suffocated. So, I really wish OP would have clarified and explained the other ways that they were caring and how they helped OP, because this guy just seems like an overly controlling jerk. This guy is labeling you things, trying to break down your self-esteem, trying to force you to reshape the way you see the world, and define the limits of what you yourself can do. That the pipeline that will only work in this relationship is that everything has to go through him first. That's no way to live. Our next story is, my 20-year-old female, boyfriend of 2 years, 20-year-old male, is going to an amusement park with his female best friend, 19-year-old female, and says I can't come because they want to be alone together. So, my boyfriend and I have been together for two years, but the past year has been really rocky. One night he went out with some friends, and after that, our entire relationship changed. We went from going out together all the time and doing fun activities, to me being at home waiting for him to get back till 2, 3 a.m. even. Recently, his female best friend, who is also my close friend, invited him to an amusement park they both worked at. She had two tickets to their Halloween event. Spoiler, she didn't, we'll explain later in post. I told him I didn't mind but I'd like to come along for obvious reasons and that I would pay for my own ticket. Then the excuses started. It's employees only. I looked it up, it isn't. Their day already passed and I could have already bought a ticket for that day on the spot. Plus, he left that park ages ago and wouldn't qualify. She doesn't want you there. Bull, she's been pushing for the three of us to hang out. Then he said I got on his nerves in big groups. Every time we're in a big group, he acts like I'm not there. Then he said he wanted to be alone with her and they wanted to be alone together. I immediately got sketched out. On his birthday, we got into a fight. He kept talking about the trip and I snapped. I told him I was sick of him putting me on the back burner 
and I was sick of being alone at the house till the middle of the night and that I wanted to go. He said the two of us can go another time, which I doubt will ever happen with my work schedule, and the event ends on Halloween. Last night, I did something I never ever do, and looked through his messages with her. He had talked mad crap about me, saying he's sick of me because I rely on him for everything. I can't drive because I was in an accident and the process to get my license has been difficult, saying how he couldn't wait to hug her and never let go. He never hugs me in public, he used to though, and then he told her about the fight. He had panned me out to be the bad guy and didn't tell her my side. He told me he called her and told her, which I don't believe. She said that he wasn't allowed to invite me because she had two free tickets, but they were talking about buying their tickets. She made him tell me a lie and I found out in the messages. I told him I went through his messages and that I was really sorry, but he wasn't upset and said that he hopes my fears are gone and that she's his sister. He also said I go out with my male friends sometimes and that he trusts me. In the past, every time they've hung out, I haven't been allowed to join. He dressed up, cleaned his car and took her out to dinner and to a lookout spot he hadn't even taken me to yet. He took me months later. When I'm out with male friends, they always ask about him and where he is, even begging me to invite him so we could all hang out, which I do every time. I'm not sure what to do in this situation. I don't know if I can trust them. I've lost sleep and gotten into fights with him. Every time I try to ask about the trip, he threatens to break up with me. How do I move forward? Honestly, it sounds like this guy has chosen his priorities. He doesn't want to communicate with you. He doesn't want to collaborate with you. Let him break up, let him go hang out with his sister all the time. Clearly it sounds like that's what they want, right? Just the little exchange they had where they said, I want to hug you and never let go. I don't think a guy should be saying that to their female best friend when they're in a relationship. I don't know, maybe some friends have a bond like that, but it just seems a bit too much, right? Our next story is, should I feel upset my boyfriend wants to return the gift he asked for? I, 29-year-old female, recently celebrated my boyfriend, 33-year-old male's, birthday. Our relationship is fairly new, so this is the first big celebration and gift-giving event we've done together. He was making a huge deal about his birthday, proclaiming it was his birthday month, etc. Leading up to his birthday, I was asking questions to get ideas about what he may want and or need for his birthday. We got on the topic of wireless headphones, because his current ones don't hold a charge, and it's very difficult to hear him on the phone. I asked him about different wireless headphones, features he likes and needs, etc. He volunteered during these conversations that he thinks the Apple AirPod Pros are the best for what he would need, and planned on getting them one day. I took note of this and ordered them for his birthday. His birthday rolls around, and he asked me all day to open his gift but decided it would be best to open everything with his family that evening. During dinner, he kept saying, Okay, you can give me my gift now. Are you going to go get my gift? I want to open my gift. So once we finished eating, I obliged and gave him the gift. He seemed happy with them and thanked me a lot for them. I wasn't sure if the gift was too much, as we've only been together a short period of time, and I noticed that none of his family members spent a lot of gifts, which is totally okay but felt like maybe it was too much. Fast forward a week or two, he asks me if I can send him the receipt for the headphones because he wants the Apple AirPod Max now instead. When I asked why, he gave a fairly simplistic answer saying that the pause button is finicky and he already has a pair of wireless headphones, so he wants some for over the head too. I was a little taken aback because these were certainly not cheap headphones by any means, 330 plus dollars, and having only been together a few months, I thought this was a nice gesture and a nice gift, after specifically saying he wanted those ones. Now he wants $700 plus headphones, but rarely offers to pay when we go out, usually sticks to a fairly strict budget. I usually pay for outings, food, drinks, gas, etc. Am I wrong for feeling off about this? Now, I understand being upset because they don't want to pay for food, drinks, gas, outings. I think it's more than understandable to be upset in that situation. But I think if it came down solely to this guy had a change of heart and they realized they would rather have a nicer gift, that if you're in a relationship with someone who bought that gift, I don't think it's too unreasonable to ask for the receipt. 
as long as specifically he covers anything else beyond what you paid. Am I wrong in thinking that way? I mean, if it just came down to they realized that they would much rather prefer the AirPod Maxes, I don't think that alone is a deal breaker. It's just combined with all of the other conservative money things he does, it's definitely coming off a lot worse. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another tricky relationship topic, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.